We're going to uh, do the announcements real quick, and I'll come back with the prayer request in just a few minutes, and we'll get started. Welcome to Kingdom Revival. We're here to have church tonight. Amen. I hope you are. And uh, we just got so many announcements, but some I feel like we needed to um, to make you aware of very quickly. Uh, Men's Fellowship is this Friday night, and I own Walker. Raise your hand, walk on the drums back there. He's going to be bringing the devotion. So y'all pray for this young man. We're so excited. And we're proud of him. His, his mom's had surgery, that's, so that's why she's not here. So we want to remember her in prayer, too, also. And, uh, but our men's fellowship, our Easter jam, uh, is this is a, Easter, a kid's Easter uh, celebration, but it's for the entire family. So we want you to come out and support that. And uh, so be aware of that. Uh, district's fellowship meeting is next Sunday night. That's right here. Uh, the, well, it'll be on my right, your left. Uh, guest speaker will be Pastor Eddie Lloyd. He's Pastor Living Faith uh, Church of God in Aiden. And we're just excited about that. The other churches will be here. So y'all come out and be with us. And we're just ready uh, for a good time. Easter egg hunt's going to be uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, ladies' ministry selling peanut butter eggs. So be aware of that. And uh, on Friday the 29th, the, um, as a church, we're planning to go to the Easter, Piney Grove Easter drama. And that's over there in the Farm Life community. It's only about 10 or 15 minutes from here. So if you'd like to go, please let us know. We're going to uh, try to get a, a, a trip up for that. And also, uh, uh, Brother Past uh, Pastor Kenneth Dixon, a good friend. Well, uh, he's become a friend of mine. I appreciate Brother Dixon, pastors. Uh, down in the Bridgeton Pentecostal Holiness Church, and they are on, they're having their 27th annual Holiness Crusade down there from Monday through Friday, March the 18th through the 22nd. So that's all next week, Monday through Friday. Greg Roberts from Georgia will be there. It starts at 7.30 every night, and we've got a busy week, but I'm going to try to get down there at least one or two nights and be a part of that. And I've been, a, I've been a few years since I've been here, and they have a, always have a great, great time in the Lord. And a, just a special, special uh, brother and um, brother and sister Dixon are just mighty, mighty powerful people of God. So anyway, won't you stand? Let's get ready to sing and worship the Lord. How many of you got your worshiping hats on? If that's a, such a, I don't even know if that's a thing or not. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Good to have you tonight. God bless you. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way For the hand of God in all my life I see And the reason of my bliss, yes the secret all is this That the comforter abides with me He abides, yes she abides Hallelujah, he abides with me
you know I sing? I sing because, because I'm happy. Because I'm happy. And I sing. I sing because, because I'm free. Because I'm free. His eyes. His eyes. His own. His own. The sparrow. And I know. Thank God I really know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, I. Amen. Give the Lord praise. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches over me. I want so full of that green pollen, I'd sing that song for you. Amen. And I'm going to give you a break tonight. Amen, amen. We, we're going to take our prayer request and lift the offering all at the same time. I, I have no idea what the total was this morning. And, uh, as you know, many of you that were here, that our loose offering uh, this weekend is going to go directly to Alex and Emily uh, Langley toward their daughter who has, uh, she's three years old, has stage four uh, cancer, and they're in the hospital, been there in the hospital about two weeks, got a great report. Uh, this weekend, she's out of ICU, and I'm not sure when they're uh, planning on coming on. But we we rejoice in what God is doing. You say, well, now say we, you know, they gave her. She's had two rounds of chemotherapy, and the doctors are amazed. I'm telling you, whether it's a medicine, whether it's a doctor, whether it's the hand of God, the people of God, we still look to the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Every, by whatever means necessary, Lord, we is our prayer now. And I know that God can still do a miracle. But God can still use his, his uh, people. He can still use doctors and nurses. and men. So we thank God for that. We thank God for that good report. That money's uh, that we'll take up, I'll give you an update on what we raised uh, during the offering. And then we've got a, a few fundraisers that we'll be doing in the near future. We want to be a blessing to this family. I mean, this is a crisis. It's a catastrophe. And, uh, but God always gets the glory, amen. And so thank you for what you've already done, what you're going to do uh, tonight. Again, if, in the loose offering, it'll go toward uh, to them. Uh, we want to present you present the tithe, the offerings, the, I mean the missions given. But any of the loose offerings is going to go to this uh, one event for this, for this day. And uh, we just, again, I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate the response of the church. Others have already responded in the community. And uh, I believe Emily's, uh, Emily's job has allowed her to take a leave of absence and then keep her job for her. So God's blessing in that way. And there's another thing that I believe there's a foundation in the company that she works for that says, told them to keep up with their receipts for gas to and from the hospital. I believe when they go get food, they can turn those receipts in. So God's got a, I mean, isn't it amazing? And how God works and looks after his people. Amen. So we thank God for that. I want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Remember, remember Ashton, that precious little baby. Jean Culifer has been taken to uh, Ridgewood for rehab, and we want to remember Jean had an opportunity to uh, visit and pray with, with them yesterday there. Kathy Bright's recovering from her hip surgery. She's also there uh, um, uh, going through rehab for that. So please re remember her also in our prayer. Brother Jethro uh, it was... Uh, brought out this morning of that serious need that as he'll be transitioning over uh, to a facility. And we want to pray for them, uh, pray for him. I'm, I'm going to take, touch, it breaks my heart to see that happen, but you know, the, the Lord has his hand on him, amen. I, I'm telling you, if there's not a person probably in this room that hasn't been touched by Brother Jethro's in ministry, amen. As a great man of God and let's continue to pray, amen. Let's get, let's honor the man of God tonight, amen. 
we stand here tonight on his shoulders. Amen, amen. We thank God for this. So please remember that. I'm trying to, Shirley Berry, continue to lift her up in our prayers. If you have an outspoken need tonight, I'm going to give you an opportunity tonight. Anybody have one they want to bring? Remember Chris also. Remember Brother Chris, Sister Joyce, I'm sorry you had a prayer need. Let's remember that. Amen. Amen. Sister Teacher. Amen. Amen. Let God arise. Amen. Let God arise. Anybody else tonight? Anybody else? Unspoken needs, uplifted hands. You're the year of the prodigal. We thank God for what he's doing. Amen's already done what he's going to do. I'm believing God to see our prodigals come in this year. Amen. Let God arise. Amen. Every, every plan, every trick that the enemy has to destroy them, to keep them off kilter, and to keep them from coming to the Lord. Amen. We are praying. We're believing. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? We're going to pray. We're going to ask after, right after we pray if you'll come and give in this offering tonight. As you see, the communion uh, is ready. We're going to have communion tonight after. I did not have it planned. Uh, welcome everybody to, uh, to participate. Uh, uh, and obviously, if you don't want to, you're not, we're not going to force you to. But we're going to do that during the altar service tonight. I, believe the, I was in prayer, and I believe the Lord laid it on my heart uh, to do this tonight. And it just ties in with what I'll be preaching on tonight. So if you would, bow your head and your hearts tonight. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we take this opportunity to say, Lord, we love you, Lord, today. This is the Lord's day, the first day of the week that the church got the New Testament set aside to gather together, Lord, and to lift up the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. So tonight we're thankful, Lord. One more time, we are gathered together in the house of God with the people of God. We bring our needs, we bring our concerns, Lord, our, our troubles and our trials. We bring them to the foot of the cross, Lord, because we know that you're able, Lord, to, to move and to do great and mighty things, Lord. Tonight, we pray these prayer needs. We bring them before you. Lord, we pray you touch every person in this building tonight. God, every need, let it be met. Lord, and let the saints of God be edified in their walk with you for healing in our bodies tonight, God. And Lord, when we, when we leave here tonight, we can truly say it has been a great day in the Lord. It's been a great day to worship God with the people of God. Now, bless this offering, what we're about to give. We pray, God, that it will go forward and, and that advance and bless the kingdom of God. And everybody said, amen and amen. God bless you as you get out of the seats and come and give it this time. Give our musicians a hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Appreciate you uh, being faithful and giving tonight. Sister uh, Silvage will come around tonight and bless our hearts. That's right. Hey, hey. I talk with my Lord many nights at my bedside. I ask his forgiveness as I knelt to pray. And if I could.
could repay I'd be only too willing For he died on the cross just to save me from sin There's a light guiding me I can see heaven's glory and it holds me steadfast to his way and his love. It's guiding me through temptations and evil. There's a light guiding me to that heaven above, to the far distant shore. Many friends have gone before me. They're singing the praises of God's love I know. Through the valley of death, I'll be guided by Jesus. He will carry me over the line we can Oh, there's a light guiding me. I can see heaven's glory. And it holds me steadfast to his way and his love. It's guiding me through temptations and evil. There's a light guiding me to that heaven of when that great day comes and I can see heaven's glory I know that my soul will be free from all care he will open the gate and bid me to enter when the rose caught up yonder, I pray to be there. There's a light guiding me. I can see heaven's glory. And it holds me steadfast to his way and his love. It's guiding me through temptations and evil. There's a light guiding me to the heaven of love. There's a light guiding me. I can see heaven's glory. And it holds me steadfast to his way and his love. It's guiding me through temptations and evil. There's a light guiding me to the heaven above. Amen. Stand tonight. Oh, I like that last verse talking about our eternal home. Amen. Through the power of the cross and the blood. And we're getting ready to go into the Easter season where we're celebrating our resurrected Lord. The precious blood of Jesus. Let's sing about that blood tonight.
There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. It was. Come on, church, lift your voices. Jesus, I said there's power in the blood of Jesus. I will, there's power in the blood of Jesus. It was oh, Can we sing that one more time? Would you lift your voice like you really mean it? Amen. Sing, church. Oh, there's power in the blood. Oh, devil hears that. Amen. He can't cross the bloodline. Amen. There's power in the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, of Jesus, it was. Sing it one more time, amen. Praise team, help me sing it. Let's lift our voices, amen. Oh, there's power in the blood of Jesus. Oh, yes, there's power in the blood of Jesus. That wonder work in power. Oh, there's power in the blood oh, of Jesus. It washes white as Can we do it? It reaches. It reaches to the highest mountain. You know, it was a, just a few years ago they wanted to take the blood out of the hymnals. The blood, the blood that gives me strength. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Because it reaches, church. Because it reaches. To the highest mountain, it flows right to the lowest valley. Oh, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, oh it's the blood, the blood that gives me strength. Gives me strength. From day. As she plays that through one more time, would you lift your hand and thank the Lord tonight for the blood of Jesus. We'll be participating in communion later on in this service. I just want to say thank you for the shed blood. Thank you, Lord God, for that cleansing power. Amen. Lord, I thank you tonight, God, that if, if we sin, Lord, tonight, we have an advocate. He's just to cleanse us and forgive us from all sin and all unrighteousness, amen. That same blood that cleansed me on day one can keep me clean, amen. Because it never, ever, ever loses its power, amen. One more time, help me sing, amen. Because it reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, and it flows. The Lord is fine. Lord, we worship you tonight, Lord. Oh, it's the blood. Come on, church. That gives me strength from day.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise tonight. Thank you all tonight. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to tie all this in tonight. I'm so thankful we sing about the blood of Jesus. I know there was a movement just a few short years ago. They, I don't know who was behind it, but they wanted to. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. We'll start with verse 9. I wanted to take the blood songs out of the hymnal. There was an emphasis on not preaching about the gory details of the shedding of the blood. The Bible says in Isaiah, he, Isaiah, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, amen. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and it's by his stripes we are healed, amen. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm, I publicly declare that I thank God for the blood of Jesus, amen. That I stand before you tonight, not in my own ability or any talents or anything that I have. It's because I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And when the Lord looks down, amen, He don't see a frail, pitiful human being. Amen. He sees one of His children that's been washed in the blood. Come on, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. I'm going to preach for a little while about a Christian service, the judgment seat of Christ. I'm going to tie it all in. We're going to come and do communion. Worship together with the people of God in the house of God. The word of the Lord said, Wherefore we labor. People, we are called to work. We are. You don't work your way into heaven. But we're called to work. He said, Whether present or absent. It's just a beautiful song, Sister Sylvia. Talks about those that are going on before us. They're praising the Lord right now. He said, whether we're present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. Verse 10. You ready? Whether we're present or we're absent. For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Sobering. Wow, it's not a trifling thing to, to know that we'll stand before the God of all creation motivates me to want to live right. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Verse 11. I don't know. A lot of times we forget this part of the scripture. Knowing therefore the terror or the fear of the Lord. We persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. Before I pray with you and for you tonight, hear me, church, we're all going to stand before the Lord. Father, Lord, I want you to imprint this in us tonight. God, I, Lord, I want burning in our conscience, in our spirit, in our soul. I put my name, Gary Bateman, you put your name in. We're going to stand. I'm going to stand before the God of all creation. I get to stand here at the judgment of the Bema seat of Christ. The Bible said we'll give an account for all the things we've done, the good and the bad. Lord, help us tonight. God, help this body of believers, those that are here, those that are listening now live online, those that are listening in the future. We're all going to stand. Help us to be ready. Come on and say amen. You can be seated. Thank all of y'all for leading. I appreciate all that good singing today and tonight and leading us in the worship of the Lord. Amen. And I want to preach. I don't have a, I don't, and I'm going to say I don't have a long message because that don't mean much. Our bishop, our state overseer, he says, I won't keep you long, he said, in light of eternity. And every time he's preached, I've been around him, he used that same joke every time. So he said, I won't be long in light of eternity. And I pray tonight that I won't weary you. But I do want to, uh, I want us to understand that what I'm preaching about tonight is one of the most serious things that you're going to hear in the house of God. One of the most serious things that we'll hear as the body of believers. The most, one of the most serious things that the church needs to understand is that all of us will appear before the Lord one day. 
We have to stand before God. Amen. Bless her heart. Amen. She's trying. Funny story real quickly. I had a woman, the same thing happened. Phone went off. And we had, a, we had a policy, if your phone goes off while I'm preaching, it's $50 fine. She, she, she was new to a cell phone. It, it rang. I was long-winded that morning. About 20 minutes after 12, it rang. I guess her family was checking on her. She fumbled to turn it off. I kept preaching. About 15 minutes later, it went off again. I said, that'll be 100. And I, 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 I told her after church, I said, please forgive me. I didn't mean to embarrass you. Amen. It's all right. It does happen. Amen. Turn it, silence them, put them on airplane mode. Better yet, leave them in the, leave them in the car. Y'all help me and say amen. We'll all stand before the Lord. That's sobering. And what that does is that it is to inspire us or to motivate us to live the lives that we know please God. It's simple preaching tonight. I know it is. But the, the thing that that's why I wanted us to do communion is to examine ourselves and to, to say, Brother and sister, to put your name, interject your name, Gary, baby, are you doing all that you can do for the kingdom of God? Are you working as fervently? Are you praying? Are you seeking the Lord? Are you fasting? Are you studying? Are you supporting your church? Are you involved in ministry? Are you doing all that you can? And you say, well, oh, brother, here we go. Another message from the preacher trying to get me to volunteer for something. Absolutely not. A message from your pastor, from your leader of this church to tell you, to warn you, to encourage you, to exhort you that we will all stand before the true and the living God. And that, that gets lost sometimes because we can see it in the careless attitudes that we have sometimes even to, to lost people or the indifference that we see about our worship. If I know that I'm going to stand before God, I want to make sure, and I will, I want to make sure that I come, when I come to this house, not only to the house of God, but I'm talking about, use that in the context, God, I'm going to, God, I'm going to give you my best he deserves it. I'm going to give you my best praise. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the, the, every bit of with this, all that's within me. Uh, let everything that I have breath praise the Lord. I want to be known. And, I, it's, and we don't do this to be seen. We don't do this uh, to, be, to be recognized or put the spotlight on us. What we do is, Lord, Lord, I know I'm going to stand before you one day. And while I'm on this earth, while I'm in this body, because I'll have a glorified body then, I'll, I'll live with him forever. I'll be praising him. I'm just practicing now for what I'm going to do for eternity. And I want to I want him to say, Gary, well done. You praised me with everything that was within you. You came and you worshiped, amen. You didn't complain. Well, sometimes I do. You, you didn't grumble and complain, you, you know, because everything, the Bible said the good and the bad is going to is going to be revealed in that day. Come on and say amen. Three times that the beam of seat is mentioned. Let me go to Romans chapter 14, beginning with the 10th verse. I'm going to read these and then preach a little while on this. But the, the beam of seat or the judgment seat of Christ is an exhaustive evaluation of your life. I, I don't know else how to put it. You're, you're in the spotlight when it's your turn. I don't know how it's going to be. There's debate about when it's going to happen. Listen, I'm not going to debate on the, the timing of this judgment. It's not the same judgment found in Revelation chapter 20. That is the great white throne judgment. You and I are not going to be there. If you're in Christ, you're not going to be at the great white throne judgment. You'll be before the Lord on the bema seat. And the timing is not important. What is important? is that you and you and you and myself, that one day at, at some point in time before eternity begins, you will stand before God. That's why I want us to do communion. I want you to hold the, 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 the bread. I want you to hold the wine. And you know it's grape juice. And, but I want you to hold the elements of, 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 of communion. And I want you to, to think about I want you to think about it. He said to do this in remembrance of me till I come. He's going to come, and after he comes, you're going to stand before him. 
And so the things that we do in our body now, the service that we do for the Lord now, amen, is paramount, it's more. What we do for Him is all that matters. It's all that is going to last. Everything that we build, everything that we, that we, we try to acquire, you, you know, you, you, can't, you heard the saying, you can't take it with you. So all of these things, what we do for Christ is the only thing that is going to matter. It's all that lasts. And so what we bring to the Lord, so I want it to motivate us tonight. I want it to get a hold of us like maybe like it's never had. That's why I prayed. I said, God, I went up to the Lord. I went up to pray this afternoon before service. And I said, God, this is we, we've heard this all our lives. God, I said, everybody knows this. Everybody's heard this. But we become indifferent to the fact when at the great white throne judgment, the Bible says that they flee from the face of him that sits upon the throne. They know that there is no hope for them. There is no, there is no further chance. There is no opportunity. Forgiveness, mercy is ended. Grace has ended for those people. They flee. They'll be stood before God. They'll give an account. Their names are not written down in the Lamb's book of life. They'll be cast in the lake of fire to be tormented day and night forever and ever and ever. But yet as the people of God, we sometimes become indifferent. You know, I've been preaching and teaching on being soul winning church and going out into the harvest and the highways and the byways but if we cannot warn people of the judgment to come amen if we become so indifferent to the things of God we are in danger what we have to do we have to understand that when we stand before God we we, we can be ashamed the, the first John 2 28 I won't go there I have it in my notes but it, the Bible says that there's a possibility of being ashamed at his coming. As Christians now, that's just talking about Christian. Because we're going to know, I believe the moment that we stand, Lord, I could have done more for you. I could have been more for you. I could have accomplished more for you. I could have prayed more. I could have spent time reading the Word of God. And I know people get so tired of hearing this. I heard it all my life. We need to pray more. Yes, we. Prayer, the church has become, and I've told you, I'm not trying to preach all my sermons in one night here. We've become so entertainment driven where the focus is what can the Lord do for us instead of what can we do for Him. It has become so entertainment driven that we come to hear, we hope that we'll hear some magnificent solo or some song or some dynamic praise and worship or some great uh revelation to drop on us from the man or woman of God as they preach instead of our focus being not on ourselves but what can I do for you Lord here I am Lord God use me let my life be poured out as a living sacrifice unto the Lord the Bible even said to present our bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the Lord which is our reasonable service what can we say for ourselves when we stand before the Lord and, and God, we, we don't have anything to lay at His feet. We don't, we don't have, we, we don't have a, a, a ministry that God has given us and a things that it's called, God's called us to do. Let me tell you something tonight, church. I'm, I'm going to wear you out with this tonight. You're going to stand before God. And it's, it's my job. It, it's my it's my calling. It's not a job. It's a call. It's my calling to warn the church. It, it's it's to, to be a watchman on the wall. And what I'm seeing as a pastor, as an older pastor now, maybe I was too dumb to recognize it then, but I, I, I think I've got a little wiser in all these years that I've been preaching, not much, but a little bit. What I'm seeing is an indifference to the things of God. What I'm seeing is simply a, a carelessness about the things of God. What I'm seeing is, is an indifference. We can come, and if, if God moves, that's fine. If God don't move, we're okay. If God saves, uh, that's fine. If He don't save, it's okay. If I don't draw any closer to God, it's all right. I'm here. I'm going to uh, punch my clock and say I've been here. What we're seeing is a carelessness that is robbing the church of its power. 
And what we must, what we must get back again is to let the, the fact that motivates us that God one day, I will personally, Gary Bateman will personally, I don't know how it's going to work. I, I, you know, I, I heard one preacher say this years ago, and, but this is before we had all these big TVs. I don't know. He said, imagine yourself standing there and God's got a giant screen television and it's replaying your life. The Bible says there's nothing's going to be hid. Nothing. Nothing. You, you, you know, and I know none of y'all talk about me. I know that, man. Praise God. I hope you don't. But it, it's going to be revealed. And, you know, that mode, that should motivate. And, and, and what my wife and I, we've learned through ministry trials and tribulations is that we've learned to, to be careful now in, in our older years, if you will, uh, to be careful what we say when we hear something about somebody else. Come on and say amen. To know that every word that we utter that we'll have to give an account of. You know, people of God, and it, we, we have this thing. We, we have, we, I didn't make this up, but somebody said we can say anything after we say, well, bless their hearts. Once we say bless their hearts, that gives us permission to say whatever we want to say about people. The Bible said you'll, you'll be judged, you'll give an account for every word that you speak. My God, help us. Every word, not, no word falls to the ground. We'll give an account. We'll give an account for our actions and our deeds. It should motivate us. And see, everybody's not going to get this. And I don't know. You, you can go out of here tonight. Some of us are going to go out of here tonight. God forbid. Maybe it's just folks listening online. God forbid that, you know, you, you don't care what I say or what nobody other, other preachers say. You're, you're like this man told me one time. Well, I'm going to say this is just the way I am. I'm going to say whatever I want to say. It's, he, I had a man tell me one time, I'm just, that's just my nature. If I got something to say, I'm going to say it. No, no, let me listen to me now. What you need to say, is, what you need to realize is whatever you say, you're going to give an account for. That way your words, you season your words with salt. You're, you're graceful. You're caring. It's, you know, it's okay to speak truth to power. Every sermon that I preach, every sermon that I preach, I have to give an account for. I, whether there's, there was some kind of doctrinal error or there was some kind of uh, uh, laziness involved or, or what, everything that I'm doing for the Lord is under a microscope. We had a tragedy here in our neighborhood last year. It's affected a num number of people in this community and, and even in this church, uh, family members in this church are still grieving and uh, you, everybody knows what happened. It was a murder-suicide. It was a tragedy. And six weeks before that murder-suicide, that man sat in this church on that back row. Come on here. Yes, he did. He sat on that back row. Six weeks. That woman... That man and that woman, they're both, they're both gone, sat on that back row. And I said, Lord, I went back and found the service. And I said, God, I want to know what I preached on. I want to look at that and say, what could I have said? Maybe there's nothing I could have said different. But as I watched the sermon, as I watched the service, toward the end of the service, in the altar service, I opened a passage of Scripture that was a warning. It was in the book of Psalms. The Lord's not revealing it. Let me remember what it was. But I, I, there was a warning, and I thought, well, that was so out of place in that sermon at that time. But what God was doing was giving that man an opportunity. Come on here. It wasn't nothing that, I, that I've done. God was giving that. God was speaking to that man and that woman. Six weeks later, they both be gone. Now, you tell me, listen to me, you tell me every word that we speak is not important. Do you, do you, every service that we hold in this building could be life or death. Every time that we come to this place, amen, bless God, they didn't sing my song. Come on here, I'm so sick of that mess. I don't, I've never heard it here, but I have heard it before. 
Well, I, you know, I didn't like the songs they picked out. It ain't about you. Boy, your brother Bateman's mad. No, I'm not. It's not about you. It's about him. You know, somebody, if you want me to preach a little better, pray for me. I guarantee you, if you'll get on your face before God every day or at least once a week and, and pray to God above God, get a hold of that man of God, get a hold of my preacher, set his coattails on fire, anoint him with the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost to preach this glorious God. My preaching will get better. Every word we say, every idle word will we'll give an account. On that day, and the beamer said, This is an exhaustive evaluation of your life. I don't believe there's going to be a big screen there. I don't, I don't, but I, I like the illustration because it speaks to all of everything that we've done, everything we do, do in private. I'm not talking about God. This, I'm not talking to you that we're, this is the judgment seat of Christ. You've made it. A lot of people don't understand this. You've made it, but you'll give an account. Before God of the good and the bad. Let me, I'll never get done if I don't hurry. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Verse 11. For it is written, as I, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess to God. Verse 12. So then, everyone of us shall give an account of himself to God. This, you know, Pastor Zach and them, they're, they're here tonight. They're, the kids are here. They're, they're not practicing the plate or whatever they're doing. But not the Easter thing they're doing. This is something that the kids need to hear. They, you know, you say, you, you might scare them. Oh, that we could put the fear of God in the minds and the hearts of our children. Because let me tell you something. That devil's crowd is after our children. I mean with a diabolical bloodlust to destroy them. That crowd, that devil's crowd is seeking to destroy. To We're having, and I don't want to get too involved in this tonight, but we're, have, we're having a wholesale indoctrination of this next generation. The statistics are bearing out. that These teenagers now, as they turn into adults, they will see no problem with transgenderism, LGBT activism, on abortion, on and on, because they've not been taught the fear of God. They've not been taught... That they'll stand before God. I'm going to tell you something. I met, we, my wife and I make a lot of decisions that Miss Annika is not happy about, but we're not here to make her happy. We're here to raise a godly young girl in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Come on and say amen. My, my, I'm, not in a, I'm not in a popularity. I'm not in a parenting uh, uh, competition. I want to raise my children up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. We're seeing a wholesale indoctrination of our young people. And, and we're seeing it. And the carelessness now that has infiltrated the church, there is not a cry for holiness and righteousness to our young people. We've charged Pastor Zach in April to, to, to preach and teach righteousness and right doctrine. Come on here. Pray for them. Pray, pray that this, this is so important because every one of these lives, it, didn't I just say that every word that we speak is important? It's life or death. I don't want to lose another teenager. I don't want to see another teenager grow up in this church and leave when they have the opportunity to leave. Knowing that that teenager will stand before God and give an account. Did we pray enough? Did we fast enough? Did we seek the Lord enough? Did we, did we call out God's name? Did we fill these altars? I've said time and time again that the, the whole, the, whole uh, the culture of the church has become so entertainment based when we forget the words of the Lord Jesus Christ when he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. We'll base this service, really, whether we, we, we will, 
We'll base it on whether or not we, that we, the singing moved us or we'll base it on whether or not the preaching moved us when we ought to base it on is how, how many of us came and laid on our face before God and touched the true and the living God and examined ourselves and said, God, oh God, help me, Lord, to live that life that will bring glory and honor to you. I get one opportunity to live for God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. This is an exhaustive, an exhaustive, comprehensive evaluation of your life. This judgment seat, this bema. It's the Greek word is bema. It's the judgment seat of Christ. This is for all Christians. The Bible says we, that we can lose reward according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a, as a wise master builder. He said, I've laid the foundation. And another is built thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, that which is Christ Jesus. Verse 12. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. 13. I'm, here we go. I, I'm glad this service, this sermon tonight is not an entertainment-based sermon. But I hope it's sobering to you. I hope that you'll hear your pastor tonight. I know we have visitors from other churches. I hope you hear this preacher tonight. We're going to stand. The Bible said, every man's work shall be made manifest. Everything that you're doing for the Lord or lack thereof will be revealed. For the day shall Declare it. There's no, you, you can't blame, well, Brother Bateman, oh, they didn't, they didn't, you know, no, it's on you. It's all on you. The spotlight is you. You've all, some of you, not all of you, but some, maybe somebody listening, you've always wanted a spotlight. Well, honey, you're going to get it. You've always wanted to be seen. You're going to be seen. The God of all creation, is, you're going to stand right before him, and it's going to be made manifest because it shall be revealed by the fire. And I, listen to me. Now, this, 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 a lot of this never gets preached, but the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now, I, I tell you, I have I pastored people over the years. They wanted the spotlight. They wanted to be on the platform. Their motivation, and, you know, we say, Brother Bateman, you're judging. No, because... I, 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 when, when, when I told a man one time, I said, uh, we gonna, somebody else is going to sing. He, he started pouting, put his guitar up, went sitting in the, in the audience. I thought to myself, what a childish attitude. Man, been going to that church 50 years, and you're going to pout and, and blow up. Y'all ain't going to help me. It, it gonna, well, you tell me now, is, are you on this platform, brother such and such, because you're doing it for the Lord, or are you doing it because you want to be seen? Every man's work, your motivation is going to be, going to be tried. I was, I was teaching the adult Sunday school class for a few years uh, before I struck out into the ministry, and I didn't realize it, but we had, a, we had a, 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 another couple that had moved in uh, and from out of from out of town, and and he wanted her to teach, and so he told the Sunday school superintendent to go uh, get a plaque with my name on it, and we're going to give me uh, a plaque and and recognize me for all my work in teaching Sunday school. I didn't realize till later on that he was just doing that to get rid of me so she, he could give the job to her. Stuff like that happens all the time. Did I get offended? I didn't get offended. I got hurt for a little bit. But you know what I did? I said, Lord, I'm glad that I was able to teach the Sunday school class. I was glad that you could use an ignorant redneck, didn't know his head from a hole in the ground, and there you are teaching the saint, the old-time saints of God in the adult Sunday school class. If, if I'm going to do something, I want to do it for the glory of the Lord. I didn't do it for that church. I did it for God, and I want to keep right on doing whatever I do. I want to do do it for the glory of God. Come on, somebody, and say amen. Because what I did for the Lord and what I'm doing for the Lord is going to be tried in the fire. Verse 14. This don't get preached much. 
If any man's work abide, which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a, a reward. Verse 15. But if any man's work shall be burned. This is the judgment seat of Christ. Everything you've labored for. Everything you've labored for. If it's not done with the right motives and the right act, actions. Going to be burned up. He shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved. Yet so is by fire. You're not, you, when you're at the bema seat of Christ. You don't, lose your, you don't lose your salvation. You're in. You've made it. You're, you're standing before God. But here, here it says that all the work that has been done. Somebody said, well, you know, we, this person did it to, to put for the riches. Well, if, he, if a person served the Lord and he became rich because of it, and that was his only reason, then whatever reward that he would have had, he's not going to have it because it's going to suffer loss. I want to help you tonight, church. I know, I, I, oh, Lord, this motivates me to do what I do. Some people say, well, Brother Bateman, you know, you, sometimes you, you, and my wife gets on me, she said, you got too, too many irons in the fire sometimes, but I want to burn out for the Lord. I want to blaze for the Lord. I, what I'm do, look, what I, what I do for the Lord is what's going to last. Amen. And listen now, if I'm doing something that's that that it, the motivations are not right, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna count because on that day it's gonna be tried by fire. So you don't have to worry about straightening me out. Amen. God's got it. I don't have to worry about straightening you out. Amen. I'm just telling you, me and you, we're all going to stand before the Lord. And give account for the words, for the deeds, for the actions, for the motives that we've done. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. I want to stand there. Go to 1 John 2.28. I said I won't going to go there. I'm about to close. And now, little children, abide in Him when He shall appear. Come on, somebody. He's coming. Every, I, I, everybody in here, I could preach on the coming of the Lord and you'd shout. I wouldn't even have to get my amen thing out. You, how many of you know by raising your hand, you know he's coming? Boy, that's the best amen I got all night. You know he's coming. When he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him. It is, it is possible for a Christian. This is talking about children of God, it is possible to be ashamed at His coming. To know that we could have done more. And I, I'm not trying to guilt you. We could have prayed more. There are times when God has laid upon our hearts to fast. And we don't fast. Come on and say, I know it's hard. There are times when God has laid upon our hearts that we, He's calling us to prayer. There are times when God wakes us up in the middle of the night to, to spend time with Him, amen, with His presence. I'm telling you right now, that's why we've been robbed of the power of God in the house of God for the people of God because we've become so entertainment-based and not presence-based. We need His presence. We need His presence here. Churches, we can accomplish great things Within ourselves, we can with our with our human work ethic and and uh, by our giving. But I don't want to accomplish it with our efforts. God will use what we give Him, but I want God. I want all that we do at Alley Good to bring glory and honor to Him. Come on and say Amen. I don't want to be ashamed at Him before coming. Last verse. Don't allow sin. I'm in Ephesians chapter five, verses fifteen and sixteen. Do not allow sin and indifference to rob us. Of our power with God. I want to encourage you. This is not a motivational speech to get you to volunteer to do something at this church. That is, if you think that's what this is, you've missed the whole point of this service. My point is to, to wake somebody up in this building. If I could just get one or two of you woke up, that you're going to stand before God. And, you, you, you know, it's, it, it's, it's like I was messing with, with, with Lindsay this morning before church. I was talking with Craig uh, in the sound booth, and I had to say something, and she wasn't paying any attention. And as soon as I said something that was related to church, her ears perked up. I said, that's just like Annika. I said, we can tell her, clean your room, and she never hears it. If I wanted to 
discuss some intimate detail of some church things. Next thing I know, I, I hear dead silence. I say, close your door. And then, it, then, then I won't hear it close. And it's, it, come on here. We're the same way. I think tonight some of us are not, are not hearing what I'm saying. You're going to stand before the Lord. You're going to stand before God. You're going to give an account. He's going to try your works in the fire. You don't get to go home and talk about people in the church. You don't get to go home and run down people. You don't get, a, you don't do, you don't get an opportunity to do that because you know better than that. That kind of wraps it up, Brother Willie. I can stop right there. Ephesians chapter 5, I'm closing. Sister Ellen, I'll just have you come back tonight because we're going to take communion. I'll, I'll have Brother Scott and Brother Kenny if he would assist me in the communion in just a moment. I, I was, everybody knows this. I preached out of this a few Wednesday nights months ago. You can't waste time. You cannot. The Word of God is so clear. I was looking at different translations of this. You, everybody knows I'm King James guy all the way. I was looking at different, uh, well, and I'm going to give you the best I can remember. But it, say, it says, see then that you walk circumspectly in a, in a, in a timely manner, not as fools, but is wise. Verse 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Go back to verse 15. If I can remember the trial. I believe it was in the CEV. It says, don't be stupid. I thought, wow. I said, when I first read it, I was really offended. Who would write that in a Bible verse? Don't be stupid. Be wise. Don't waste time because our time is short. I believe our time is short as far as our lifespan. Our time is short because I believe the Lord is soon to return. So we, we're not afforded. And, and, you know, and it, one of the, you know, I have a love-hate, and I'm closing, I promise. I have a love-hate relationship with a cell phone. They are one of the most incredible tools. These young people don't have a, they don't have a clue what life was like before cell phones. You young adults, you don't have a clue what life. I don't know what we wasted our time on back then. I'm sure it was something. But I, every one of our phones has, can tell us how much time we've spent on that. Mm. Oh, me. And one day I got on mine and it looked and it was, Lord, I don't know, three hours and 26 minutes. I ain't been on my phone for no three hours and 26 minutes. And I looked, it was emails and Fox News and texting and all of that. Y'all ain't going to help me. But I think the Lord uses technology like that to show us. I believe we can, we can relate that to this scripture. Use your time wisely. I, I got on the church Wednesday night. Some of y'all won't hear. It was a great sermon, by the way. This is amazing. We'll post all this ridiculous stuff on social media. Let somebody get saved. It, it, it just shows us the indifference Y'all say, you're being hard again. Y'all can take it. My goodness, I've listened to some of them sermons Brother Jethro preached. I'm surprised any of y'all got any hide left on you. I ain't worried about preaching hard. But it's amazing to me how anybody can spend hours, and there's these gangs on this. On, and I'm not, listen, I'm not criticizing you. I waste time too. But Lord, help us to redeem the time, to use what time we have left for the Lord. Would you stand?
Brother Scott, if you come. Brother Kenny, do you mind helping out? And I'll have y'all stand right before the people. I'm going to call you up in just a minute. I'm going to read the scriptures first. Would you bow your heads with me just a moment?